Howdy, let's see what happens tonight. Wake Forest controlling the tap. Penna gets it over to Taylor. And here's Amber Campbell guarded against by Grottenjun, and we get things started. Ariel Stevenson with the drive over Gleasing and scores it with the left hand. Well, David, Ariel Stevens is an outstanding player, likes to penetrate. Stevenson on the all ACC freshman team, averaging 13 points a game. It'll be a difficult matchup for Gleasing. Wake Forest, man to man to start. Whitney Knight down low, double team, kicks it out. Titisha back to Knight for three. Rebound is loose, and Kanisha Atwater tracks it down. And Jay Webb, we were wondering, Kanisha banged up her knee in the Bethune Cookman game on Friday. Showed a quick spurt to get that loose ball. And now fires up a three. And Gleasing a good play to knock it off Quinn out of bounds. So the Eagles will maintain possession. Jen Hoover is in her fourth year at Wake Forest in the Demon Deacons Athletic Hall of Fame. And the only time Wake Forest made the NCAA tournament was when she helped lead them there as a player. And what a player she was, scoring over 1,000 and grabbing over 1,000 rebounds. Knight can't get the jumper to go. It was a good move by Knight there. Campbell gets it over near side to Stevenson. Amber Campbell driving, lost it. Now Atasia Taylor with it. Looks to go one-on-one -on -one against Atwater. Penna, pass deflected, wild shot. Here's Knight coming the other way for FGCU. When Knight is handling the ball, you have got to be watching because she will find you if you're wide open. Grottingen for three. Well, the Eagles are very cold starting out here right now. Wake Forest doing a good job challenging the perimeter shots. Taylor to Stevenson, 18-footer. Atwater looks to run, three on three. Kanisha with the drive on Stevenson, but she traveled. Carl Semesco, the only coach that FGCU has ever had, looking for his 375th win at FGCU. And also a win tonight would give him his fourth 30-win season in 14 years with the Eagles. In the lane, Quinn. Oh! Whitney Knight says, nothing doing here. Beautiful cut by Grottingen, but she can't finish with the left hand. Boy, you got to make those layups, David, when you penetrate past this formidable front court there of uh, the Demon Deacons. Three minutes gone. Eagles still scoreless. Stevenson, step back jumper. No. Knight taps it over to Atwater. Well, it was a good box out there by Whitney Knight. Kanisha with the crossover and the drive and the bucket and the foul. So it took three minutes and 12 seconds. And a foul on on Atasia Taylor. Well, Taylor doesn't have a foot speed to stay with Atwater. So if the big rim protectors aren't back there, the Eagles are going to get some layups. Jamie Gleasing checks out, and Katie Metter checks in. And Metter with a career-high 17 points on Friday night in the win over Bethune. She was, she was doing it all, David. Rebounding, blocking oh. shots. Guarding the bigs in the post. Campbell, foot on the line, long distance two. Whitney in transition to Dunson. By Tisha with double digit assists and becoming FGC's all time leading assist leader. And Atwater has her drive block, but she gets it back. 
Trottingen fakes the three. Beautiful bounce pass, Dunson to Atwater. Eagles finding the creases when you cut hard to the basket, David, and get a step on your defender, layups will be there. Four minutes gone, 5-2 FGCU. Double team Stevenson. Demon Deacons pass out of it. Campbell with the drive. Knight got a piece of it. Quinn with the rebound. Penna can't get it to go, excuse me. Dunson to Atwater, open for three. Well, it's Kanisha Atwater, eight. Wake Forest, two. And after going over three minutes without scoring to start this game, a quick 8-0 spurt by FGCU. And the Eagles lead by six. The paint because of their size. And then execute the game plan that uh, Coach Hoover has drawn up for them this evening. And then we look at FGCU. Hey, obviously they got a rebound and make sure that they play solid, solid defense against a very effective Demon Deacon team. Well, FGCU giving up 49 points a game, second in the nation, and so far holding Wake Forest to one of eight shooting from the field. Amber Campbell gets it out high. Milan Quinn, Ariel Stevenson. Ball deflected, stolen by Metter. Dunson in transition. Midway through the first quarter. Knight has it knocked away from behind by Quinn. Atwater, six seconds to shoot. Kanisha with the crossover and the drive and draws the foul on Stevenson. Wake Forest thought that was an over and back. That the ball was knocked to about mid-court, but that Dunson grabbed the ball before crossing the timeline and then crossed it. Obviously, the officials disagreed. Second team foul on the Demon Deacons, first on Stevenson. And Atwater, a 67% free throw shooter, makes one of two. 9-0 Eagles run in a little over two minutes' time, and Stevenson lost control of the ball, and that's the first turnover of the game for the Demon Deacons. Second, um, excuse me, they just had back-to-back -back turnover. Stephanie Haas checking into the game for the first time for FGCU, one of 9,000-point scorers in their history. Haas fakes the three. Metter got knocked to the floor, couldn't get up in time to receive the pass. Dunson in the lane. Now see, there's the shot you want when you've got shot blockers. Stop, pump fake, hit the little jumpy. 11-0 FGCU run. Campbell, Metter picks her up on a switch. Now Taylor. Far side, Destiny Walker in the game for the first time. Pass knocked away. Taylor out high to Walker for three. And she oh. hits. Just the eighth three-pointer of the year for the freshman, Destiny Walker, and a much-needed bucket for the Demon Deacons. Dunson with the drive. Can't get it to go with the left hand. Quinn to Taylor. She tries two for two. Rebound tipped up. Eventually Knight comes away with it. Whitney says, I'm going to take it myself. And she does with the drive. The lane open for Atwater. Oh, home cooking on that rim. So wide open, nearly missed the layup. 11 
of FGCU's 13 first quarter points by Kanisha Outwater. Whoa. Taylor with a bit of a push. Just a little bit of contact there. Walker down low, blocked from behind by Knight. And then last touch by Quinn for Wake Forest. I got Knight with three blocks here. I mean, holy Samoa. And Whitney Knight heads to the bench. Three different WNBA teams have been in town for her last three games. At this point, I think it'll be a surprise if she is not drafted by a WNBA team. First round may be a bit of a reach, maybe, but with her skill set, it may not. Haley Lauder in the game for the first time as well. Bounce pass, Metter to Atwater, can't finish. Here comes Elisa Penna the other way, and Penna goes coast to coast, only to have Metter step in and take the charge. David, Elisa Penna, what an interesting story. She Came in second semester, came in from Italy, landed the day after Christmas, came off the bench for two games after practicing, and then has started every game since that. 6 3 freshman who averaged double figures a game in the ACC. Haas with the drive, forced it. Here come the Demon Deacons the other way. Stevenson. Candace Ball over to Penna. Can't get the jumper to go. Met her the rebound in traffic. Atwater looks to push the tempo. Met her open for three. Just her seventh three pointer of the season. So Walker hits her eighth. Met her hits her seventh. And a three from the far side, no. Long distance two for Ariel Stevenson. Ariel Stevenson has a long range shot there, David. Just barely, almost a three. Haas for three. Stevenson the rebound. As we head to the final minute of the first quarter. Water does a good job shutting down Stevenson. Ball in the lane to Penna, who forces one up. Can't get it to go off the glass. Lauder, good job boxing out Stevenson and grabbing the rebound. Haas fakes the three and will drive it and score it. First points for Scoop Haas. One of seven seniors on the roster for tonight's game. Got a nine second difference between the game and the shot clock. Stevenson for three. Haas the rebound, FGCU can hold for the final shot. Taitisha getting the instructions yelled at her from the bench. Pulls back, hesitation dribble. Forces one up. Haas with the rebound and oh. scores it. It was as if everyone else stopped except Steph. Well, David, if you're a Demon Deacons, you may want to put out a missing persons report because Campbell, Quinn, and Pena have not scored yet. So they've got to find them quickly if they want to stay in this ballgame. Whitney Knight forcing the issue. Yeah, she forced that shot there. Taking it right at Quinn. Good defense by Milan. And you mentioned those three, Jay Webb, because they're three of the four Demon Deacons who average in double figures. And here they are scoreless early second quarter. Stevenson and a moving screen and a foul on Quinn. Well, this is not how Coach Hoover wanted her Demon Deacons to start out this ballgame. A little token pressure here. Tisha Dunson handles it. Not much that the senior has not seen. Haas with the fake drives right into the lane, right by ball and scores it. Now see that little, little floater David can work. 
because they're looking for you to go one more step in and they're going to try to block it. So smart adjustment by Stephanie Haas. And Jay Webb, I think this is one of the things that happens in tournament play. Aggressive drive inside by Candace Ball, who was looking for a foul there. They are letting them play underneath. Ball thought that Whitney Knight had made some contact with her on the drive. And in fact, she's, she's got a bloody nose. She was scratched on the outside of her nose. And clearly that's brought some angst from both Candace Ball and head coach Jen Hoover wondering how that could happen without a foul being called, which seems a fair question. I see if there's blood, you might want to say, you know, that I don't think that blood was self-imposed. It does seem like a fair question. Yeah. I, I got to give him that. But Steph Haas with the pump fake there before that drive, that's one of those, like, a senior, she's been doing that pump fake for four years. An A-Sun team probably doesn't fall for that pump fake. Right. Because they they've seen it so many times. But if you're Wake Forest and you've seen, you know, maybe a little bit of film and one scouting report, Haas came over for the double team and stripped it from Quinn in transition. Atwater with the fake and the drive. Can't get it to go. Stevenson, a deep three. Oh, that thing was almost from, from North Carolina, David. I'm going to say, Curry thought that was a deep three. Yeah, that was deep. He thought it, it was, was a deep three. Two minutes gone, second quarter. Haas with the drive. Well, see, you've got to be particular when you drive now, David. You cannot take wild shots. Taylor with the drive. Oh, excuse me, Taylor to Campbell. And Amber Campbell was fouled on the drive. Kenesha Outwater with the foul. Haley Lauder and Steph Haas check out of the lineup. Katie Metter and Jamie Gleason are back in. Eagles led 20 to seven after the first quarter. So the Demon Deacons still searching for their first points of quarter number two. Stevenson and a bit of a hand check by Grottingen. Well, see, that's something this time of the year players should know. You cannot touch on the perimeter. Second team foul on FGCU. But not a lot of fouls called in this game, David. Taylor inbounds it to Penna. In the lane, Quinn taking it right at night. She takes the ball away from her. Whitney quickly the other way. Atwater for three. Stevenson the rebound. Taylor and the Demon Deacon still looking for their first points of the quarter. And Grottingen, or is it Gleason? It is Grottingen with the push from behind. Her second, third team foul on the Eagles in the quarter. Destiny Walker checks in as Milan Quinn, 6'1 freshman out of Charlotte. Excuse me, junior out of Charlotte. Taylor to inbound. Campbell gets it in the lane to Penna. Turn around, no. Metter tracks down the miss. Well, that was a good look by Penna, too. Atwater, a couple of hesitations. Dunson with the drive on Campbell. Atwater fakes the three, lane opens up. 13 for Atwater. Well, those, by spreading the floor, those lanes are there, David. Demon Deacon still have not scored in the second quarter. Walker thought about a three. Stevenson will shoot another three. Long rebound, Atwater looks to run. Does she have any help? Mm -hmm. 
Knight drives by Walker. Oh. And Jen Hoover says we I, need to regroup. I think I've seen enough, she's saying. Timeout on the floor. Eagles have scored the only six points of the second quarter. Kanisha Atwater with half of FGCU's 26 points. That's here. The Eagles are rebounding the Demon Deacons. They're plus six. But if the Deacons are going to get back in this, they've got to improve on this three out of 20 from the field. Wade Forrest yet to score in the second quarter. Penna guarded by Metter. And Atwater just takes it away from her. One on two is Kanisha. And she waits for some help. Atwater knocked away by Walker, but Knight picks it back up. Knight give and go to Metter. Oh, a little too hard. A little too hard there. But David, when you're the size of Penna or Quinn, don't put the ball down by your knees where someone at water size can just pick your pocket. Well, I don't think they saw Kanisha coming from the weak side, but beautiful pass inside. Ball tied up momentarily. Taylor to Penna. Penna's got the size and creates some room, and that was a beautiful little drop step and banked it in as well. With the left hand. First points of the game for Penna. First points of the second quarter for Wake Forest. As we're midway through the second quarter. Demon Deacon shows some zone for the first time. Well, they've been known to run a 2-3 zone. Grottinger from the corner. That's who FGCU wants to get it to. Sophomore yet to score in this game for the Eagles. Candace Ball stolen by Grottinger. One on one. Grottinger with the spin. Ball loose. Metter picks it up. And mistake by the shot clock as they reset the shot clock. And Grottinger's shot did not hit the rim. Grottinger trying to become a female version of uh, Zach Johnson there at that little 360. Well, something FGCU fans have noted in the second half of the season, Jay Webb, Grottingen becoming more than just a stationary shooter. She yes. has put the ball on the floor a lot more, I think because she knows she has to. Misses another three, but met her. See, my blue collar girl in there, I'm telling you, she'll get it done for you, David. Katie Metter with the offensive rebound, and the Eagles much to Wake Forest surprise so far with the rebounding edge. Dunson penetrates in the middle of the zone. Five seconds now for Knight. He'll just shoot it. And a long rebound, and so Grottingen able to corral it. Boy, another, you can't give a shooting team like the Eagles three possessions. That's just what has happened so far. Demon Deacons staying in the zone. Metter blocked from behind nicely by Walker. But I like the cutting back under there. Gradishon finding her. The Eagles want to use what they call NBA passes, David. Quick, quick, quick. As opposed to dribbling and standing around. 12 seconds for the Eagles to shoot. Atwater waits till six seconds and drives. Dunson forces one up and hits. Second time she's made that exact move and shot. And this is the biggest lead of the game for FGCU. Pass deflected, but gets to Quinn. Kicks it out, Campbell, who drives in the lane, and an offensive foul. Well, the Demon Deacons need to slow down right now. They're sort of out of sorts, David, and your guards have got to help establish order. Foul is on Amber Campbell, her first. Second team foul of the quarter. See, if you play the Eagles, you have to know, these young ladies are willing to take charges, so they're going to be there waiting for you. Team and Deacons go back to the zone.
Eight seconds now, and Knight's pass stolen away by Penna. Oh, oh. Penna crosses over not once but twice and picks up the foul. It looked like a little hip scop and a jump there, David. Is that a Euro step there? It is when you get away with it. It is when you get away it's with it. It's traveling when you don't. <laughs> Penna a little behind the back here. Uh, very aggressive at the top of that zone. You know, 6-3 at the, at the top of a, whether it be a 1-2-2 or a 3-2 or even a 2-3 zone. She's very active. And Whitney Knight doesn't see many 6-3 people that can do those things. Penna, an 84% free throw shooter. Hits them both. Lisa has all four Wake Forest points in the second quarter. Eagles led by 13 after one, and have led by as much as 19. And a careless turnover there between Knight and Dunson. And once again, it's Penna hustling after it. Well, see, you cannot be lackadaisical when you are up this many points because a team like the Demon Deacons can get their groove on and you're in trouble. So. You gotta pay attention. You can't have what I call mindless turnovers. Now back to back turnovers by Whitney Knight. Walker double team momentarily. Down low, Quinn, and she has her pocket picked by Atwater. Two minutes ago, second quarter. And Wake Forest man to man defensively. Penna knocks it away. Man, what From Haas. Nice hands by the big girl. Walker, offensive foul. Destiny Walker did not like that call. But David, the refs have been consistent with that call, so you've got to make the adjustment. And Jen Hoover not very happy with that call either. Third team foul on the Demon Deacons, first on Walker. Haas, guarded by Walker. Dunson with nine seconds. You see, you cannot hold that ball like that. She gets it down there low you to go. Atwater. 15 for Kenesha Atwater. And a guarded by Lauder. And on the handoff, Penna called for a moving screen. Now, that is something we have seen a lot of this year, Jay Webb, the emphasis on the screen. Well, I think what Hoover and Penna are arguing was, was that she wasn't setting a screen. Atwater with under a minute to go. Rebound, Kiana Allen. Well, for fans who are maybe just tuning in or and not seeing a, a woman's game or a men's game, point of emphasis, it, whoa, now that's a heck of a shot, David. Deep three by Arielle Stevenson. She has seven of the Demon Deacons' 14 points. Three from the corner by Dunson, no. Walker and Haas fight for the rebound, and the Demon Deacons will get the final possession of the quarter. What we're saying is you cannot be moving when you are setting a pick. But I think, like you said, they were saying there was no pick being set. Stevenson to Taylor. Pass knocked away by Haas and stolen by Atwater. He takes a look at the clock and sees 10 seconds. Kanisha with the crossover and draws the foul with six seconds to go. Good sportsmanship there by Tasia Taylor picking up Atwater. Well, they're saying, you know, we're going to knock you down, but we're going to help you out. Second on Taylor, and Atwater will go to the line. For she is two of three on the night. And despite her 15 first half points, I don't know if Kanisha is feeling the effects of that hard foul or feeling the effects from the injury against Bethune-Cookman, but she's
She does look as if there is a slight hitch in, in her giddy up, as they say. Atwater makes the second free throw. Final six seconds here. Walker catches it at midcourt. Oh, you don't want to reach in and foul. And that should be the fifth team foul against FGCU of the quarter, which will result in free throws. Well, see, Kanisha's a veteran. She's got to know better than that, David. And it's her second foul. It is the fifth team foul. So Destiny Walker, a 54% free throw shooter, will get the shoot a pair. And, you know, Carl Semesco takes the timeout, the use it or lose it first half timeout. Chance to um, set up a play here for the final 3.6 seconds off a make or a miss. Well, now people are probably saying, wait a minute, you're up 31-14, 3.6 seconds on the clock. Why are you calling a timeout? because you may have this situation where you're up by one or down by one and you have a play that you want to work on in that critical pressure situation. Well, the other way to look at it is FGCU was up 13 mid third quarter against Jacksonville in the ace on final and ended up losing by two. No lead is safe. You right. ask Northern Iowa. Oh, up 12 with 44 seconds to go last oh, night. I tell you, my good friend Jim Wolpart, who's was at FGCU for years is out there. He's probably still not sleeping. You may remember that one, unfortunately, for a long time as Walker makes a second free throw. And referee Ed Salaski blowing the whistle to say it was no turnover. Two seconds now for FGCU. Well, the Demon Deacons are doing what I like the idea they're pressing. And FGCU will be hard pressed to get a shot off. Wide right. But a good in Atlanta. Demon Deacons with the basketball looking for a quick start, particularly offensively in this third quarter. Well, they've got to get Campbell and Quinn off the snide here. Well, there's Quinn setting a screen for Campbell. Penna, far side, Taylor. Down low, Penna. Quinn with the drive and picks up the foul on Whitney Knight. That's the second on Knight. Good screening and ball movement there by the Demon Deacons. And Milan Quinn. The chance to score her first points of the game at the line. Quinn, a 59% free throw shooter. So the Demon Deacons within 14, the closest they've been since early second quarter. But Daitisha Dunson. Answers in a hurry. Well, that little seven-foot jump shot's been been absolute money for her tonight, David. All three of Daitisha's buckets in the lane. Stevenson with for three. Rodden outlets to Atwater. Gleasing for three. And Atwater with the hustle. Long rebound, long shot, long rebound. Knight. Well, the Demon Deacons are in a zone here, David. A little 1-3-1, one, one, which became a 2-3, and Dunson was wide open but missed it. Big smile on her face. She knows she, she let one get away there. Campbell with a beautiful give and go, but Quinn misses that. Down low, Penna can't convert, and then a tie-up. And the possession arrows with FGCU. David, one of the things the Eagles have to avoid is missing bunnies because 
We saw in the Jacksonville game what happened. Missing bunnies. Jacksonville got hot. It could happen with the Demon Deacon, so you got to make layups and extend the lead. Wade Forrest trying to trap in the half court. Good ball movement, gets Grodingen an open three. Now see, that's the ball movement you want. First three of the game for Taylor Grodingen. Just the third three for FGCU. So they hit 15 threes in the win over Bethune-Cookman on Friday. So far tonight, it's a secondary weapon. Grodingen with the reach in on Stevenson. Who thought that she got hit on the arm. Well, she may have. Yeah, I thought she did too. We actually heard what we thought was contact. <laughs> a little contact there. But there were a lot of bodies there, and the officials were screened on the play. Knight, 4-3. So after hitting two threes in the entire first half, the Eagles have hit two threes here early in the third quarter. Campbell with the drive and bucket. Nice move there by Campbell, David. And that's the first points for Amber Campbell. So we said both Quinn and Campbell need to get it going here in the third quarter, and they've both scored two early points. Well, you know, we've always said we don't think good shooters are going to have two bad halves. Henna gets it over to Taylor. Campbell down low, little jump hook in the lane by Quinn. Composition on Whitney Knight. Well, I think Whitney's got to be careful to not pick up that third foul. Dunson penetrates, kicks it back, Gleasing for three. Jamie did has lost her three-point shooting touch. Well, David, she didn't look confident when she shot that ball. Quinn with the drive on Knight, who blocks her fourth shot. But Quinn tracks it down. Taylor muscles it into the lane and picks up the offensive foul. Jen Hoover is not happy with that call. And the Wake Forest coach feeling as if her team not getting the benefit of the whistle so far tonight. She's extending that arm out there to make it contact, so. That is the third foul on Atasia Taylor. Grottingen for three. Well, I mean, she's a long-range bomber. Three third-quarter threes already for FGCU, and Metter and Taylor got their feet Tangled, and Katie Metter picks up the foul, her first. The Eagles doubling up the Demon Deacons right now. Walker hands it to Quinn. Now Stevenson. In the lane. Penna. Oh, that's a sweet shot there by Penna. Soft hands for Lisa Penna. Now Wake Forest offensively beginning to pick it up here. But the Eagles have made them pay by going to the zone by hitting three threes. Dunson with the drive, blocked nicely by Campbell out of bounds. Nine seconds to shoot. See, that's once again where you stop, put up the pump fake. Let him foul you. Atwater taking it right at Stevenson. Rebound. Atwater grabs her own miss. And is that going to be a jump ball? Is it going to be a travel? Is it going to be a foul? I know one thing. There's a lot of sweat on that floor. Ed Selaski is the one who came in in the dark hair. He's been doing the most talking. He feels as if he had a clear view of the play. See Atwater with the drive. The ball does hit the rim. And Kanisha grabbed the ball. Stevenson 
Stevenson came in. Well, we overheard one of the officials say, we think we have a shot clock violation. I think they're going to find out they don't. Because it looked as if when Atwater drove, she went for the bank shot. And while it came up short, the ball yeah, it hit the rim. kissed off the glass and hit the rim. And instead, they're going to say, instead of a shot clock violation, it is a jump ball. And the possession arrow goes to the Demon Deacon. Correct. So Wake Forest basketball, 5.03 to go in the quarter. Amber Campbell crosses midcourt with exactly five minutes to go, third quarter. Walker on the block, Quinn. Quick drive by Metter. Missed the shot, however, but grabs the rebound. Penna with the pull-up jumper. Can't get it to go. Beautiful rebound and follow by Quinn. Hey, Quinn is a workhorse on the boards. Six third quarter points for Milan Quinn. I mean, David, she's had 10 double-doubles this year. Well, Wake Forest looks like a different team offensively. They've already outscored with 10 points here in the third quarter. Their total point total for the first quarter and the second quarter separately. But the Eagles right now, they've got it going offensively. Atwater with 18 in the game. Walker with the drive. Picks up the foul on Grottingen, and that's her third. Third team foul on FGCU as well. Kanisha Atwater and the Eagles. So you, you would think that that would be the Demon Deacon's advantage. Stevenson and Dunson collide. Now the other thing is the Demon Deacons have 13 turnovers. The Eagles only have six. First on Dunson, it is the fourth team foul on FGCU. Penna hands off to Quinn and now Campbell with it. Stevenson with the drive right by Knight and a foul is called. Let's see who it's on. And it's on Whitney Knight and that's her third. And it's also the fifth team foul here in the third quarter. So 3.41 to go third quarter. And we'll see how much longer Carl Semesco stays with Whitney Knight with three fouls. Well, Carl was asking uh, Ed Selensky there to check to see who the foul was on. And Ed Selaski is asked referee Mark Zentz who is the foul on or or is he asking Kenny in fact check to see who the foul is on. They're going to check on it later. I think they're going to check it during the next break. Stevenson makes the first, misses the second. Now, if you're Carl Semesco, though, it's great that you're going to check it during the next break, but you're leaving Knight in right now with three fouls. And what if, in fact, she has three fouls? Atwater with the drive. Can't get it to go, however. And last touch by FGCU. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah he, I would. Right now, Knight has three. She could have two. Two. But she's got three. Three. And she's being left in the game. Well, she's got to be smart enough not to, not to be challenging shots in there now. Walker, Quinn, and Knight intercepts the pass and leads a three-on-one break. And Whitney switches hands but can't finish. And now here comes Quinn the other way. Demon Deacons with numbers. And Quinn runs over Daitisha Dunson. And Milan Quinn had numbers here. 
And even Coach Hoover said to her, you gotta, gotta give that up. Second foul on Quinn. Dunson with the aggressive drive again and picking up the foul on Campbell. See, at some point in time, and I agree with you, David, I would get uh, Whitney Knight out of there until they can check on, see what her true foul situation is. And I think that may be happening. Daitisha Dunson, a 78% free throw shooter. Taylor Grodinson checks in for Whitney Knight, as you anticipated, Jay Webb. So we'll see how long the two-time reigning ace on player of the year sits. And Dunson misses both. That's, That's unusual. Highly unusual. So an opportunity here for the Demon Deacons. Knight off the floor. Campbell with the crossover, drives in the lane. Can't finish, however, Haas with the rebound. Kenesha Atwater, 18 points in the game so far. Haas with a quick first step, but Penna knocked it out of bounds, and it went off Haas. So Demon Deacon ball. You see, that's another empty possession. Even though you're up, you cannot afford empty possessions on a team who can turn it on like the Demon Deacons. Stevenson. Campbell in the lane now oh. to Quinn. Beautiful pass down low to Walker. Nice. A little high low there. Six points for the freshman, Destiny Walker. 16-point game. This is what it was at the half. Well, first of all, you got to quit dribbling the ball and move the ball. And then the cutters have got to have vicious cuts going to the basket. Matter to Atwater. Kanisha takes it at Stevenson and draws the foul. And that'll be the second. On Ariel Stevenson, fourth team foul on Wake Forest. Atwater, who is three of five from the free throw line tonight. And the Eagles have gone cold from the uh, free throw line here, David. I believe now they are three of eight in the game. 19 for Atwater, 17 point FGCU lead. Minute 15 to go, third quarter. Whitney Knight back in the game. Quinn to Stevenson. Knight, a little bit of contact on the baseline, but Stevenson keeps attacking and scores it. 10 for Ariel Stevenson. Under a minute to go, third quarter. Mesco setting the offense there for the Eagles. Haas tonight for three. Rebound Campbell. Penna with the baseline drive in the lane to Quinn. Can't convert. Gets her own miss, however, and draws the foul. Who is it on? I think it's on Whitney Knight. It is. So is that her third or her fourth? So the calculated gamble to bring Whitney Knight back in the game for the final minute and change of the third quarter may very well have backfired. Katie Metter in as Whitney Knight sits down. 28.9 seconds to go, third quarter. Quinn, who's had a big third quarter. Eight points in the quarter for Milan Quinn. David, I think it's imperative that the Eagles score on this possession to go into the fourth quarter off a made basket. Get a little momentum going. FGCU had a 22-point lead 
Two and a half minutes into the third quarter. Haas with the drive on Stevenson. Scores it with the left hand. Eight points for Haas. Three seconds now. Campbell does not get the shot off in time. But now it's going to be time for some of the other Eagles to step up and uh, take care of business. Wake Forest with some pressure. Katie Metter and Steph Haas off the bench to start this fourth quarter for FGCU. We're going to have to make good decisions and have excellent ball movement. Haas with the drive on Walker. A little too strong. Here's Penna the other way. Quickly up court. Beautifully to Quinn. And Quinn, who was scoreless at the half, has 10. And what was a 22-point lead is now 13. Atwater. No one to pass it to. Well, there are 12 seconds here in the shot clock. Dunson with the drive, but draws the foul. See, David, every dribble allows that man-to-man -man or zone to just somewhat negate your clog. They're going to clog up your cutting zones and your ability to drive. So moving the ball side to side is going to get you openings. Foul was on Amber Campbell, her third. Dunson, who missed two free throws late in the third quarter. I think the score, Jay Webb, determines how long Coach Semesco keeps Knight on the bench. As long as it stays double figures, you can afford to, I think, keep Whitney Knight on the bench. It gets the single digits. I think you see number 14 in the game. Dunson doing a nice job on Stevenson. Beautiful pass inside by Penna. Loose ball, Grottingen comes away with it. Here's Dunson, three on three. Haas, four three. Well, that's critical right there, David, to get a little space between the Eagles and the Deacons. It was a 13-point game a moment ago. Quinn in the lane over Metter. Well, right now, Milan Quinn is an unstoppable force. 12 points, all of it in the second half. So she's a point a minute here after halftime. Grottingen for three. Okay, Webb, the Eagles are starting the fourth quarter the way they started the third, hitting three. Well, that was critical, especially with Whitney Knight on the bench. Penno with the drive and a foul call. And it is on Katie Metter. Second on Metter, first team foul on FGCU of the quarter. Coach Hoover goes to her bench. Quinn and Walker to get a quick breather. Well, I will tell you, these Eagle fans are vicious on officials, aren't they? Well, they changed it from Metter, number three, to number 24, Taylor Grobingen, and that's her fourth. Right. That's a big correction. So Knight and Grobingen both with four fouls. And Haley Lauder will check into the game for Grobingen. So the bench having to play some big minutes here in the fourth quarter with some starters in foul trouble. You're going to have to have some people step up for some long-range shooting for the Eagles. Ball. Eagles fighting through screens. Oh, Metter with the deflection. Lauder the steal. And Lauder had her pocket pick, but Penna lost it out of bounds. I don't, think, I don't think they want Lauder handling the ball in the open court there, David. Seven and a half minutes to go. 
The Eagles have never advanced as far as the third round of the WNIT. To win tonight, they'd face the winner of Tulane and Georgia Tech, which was a close game in the third. Haas with the quick first step. That is 13 points for Steph Haas. Well, the Demon Deacons need stops. They can't afford to exchange baskets. Well, they cut it to 13, and since then, FGCU has been rolling offensively, and Stevenson forced a bad shot there. Well, see, you got to take better shots than that when you're trying to dig back into a game when you're in this kind of a deficit. So the Eagles extending what was a 15-point lead going to the fourth with Whitney Knight on the bench for the first three minutes and Taylor Grodgen on the bench with four fouls for over a minute now. Atwater with the hesitation and the drive and draws the foul. Walker picks up the foul. And Atwater will try to crack the 20-point barrier when she steps to the line. 16 points in the first half. And the senior takes a deep breath. She is now four of eight for the free throw line on the night. And that is 20 points for the senior. Well, she's carried a load here with Knight being in foul trouble and on the bench now. So the Eagles have upped their lead to 22. Campbell lost it in the lane. Metter picks it up. Dunson up ahead to Atwater. She runs some clock. Haas for three. Well, unless you're going to make the three. 16 for Stephanie Haas. That's a season high off the bench. And this is the biggest lead of the game for FGCU. Lauder with the block on Taylor. And before the shot, there was a foul call to reach in. And it's on Haas. But we wondered who FGCU would go to, J. Webb, in the fourth quarter offensively with Knight on the bench, joined quickly thereafter by Grottingen. Yeah. Steph Haas has scored eight of FGCU's 14 fourth quarter points. Lauder forcing the miss by Penna. Good defense there by Haley. And then the sophomore races up the floor. Haley Lauder will be a big part of next year's team here at FGCU. Lauder on the floor with four seniors right now. Oh, a little double dribble there. Eighth turnover of the game for the Eagles. Lauder, you see her there, number 20. She played a big early season role when Whitney Knight was hurt. Was the second leading scorer on the team for the first half of the year. And Lauder gets a nice ovation as she heads to the bench, as does Metter. Well, as well they should. And Knight and Grottingen, both with four fouls, head back on the floor. Penna pulls up oh. and hits the shot. Penna has eight. Haas will try it again. Dave, I think for the Eagles, time is more important than points right now. Three from the wing, nearly banked in. Fight for the loose ball. Penna comes away with it. Five minutes to go, fourth quarter. Taylor with a nice crossover Whoa. and bucket. First points of the game for Atasia Taylor. That order looking, finds Knight. Whitney with the step back is knocked to the ground and fouled. I believe by Quinn. Yeah, Milan Quinn the foul, her third. 
timeout on the rally at home. We're led to believe that the game would be Thursday night here at Alico Arena. So it depends on, is it a Conference USA battle or another ACC battle for the Lady Eagles? Whitney Knight, who had a big game in the win against Bethune-Cookman. 20 plus points, 16 rebounds, bunch of assists and block shots. Statistically tonight, six points, five rebounds, four blocks so far. Taylor with the drive, no. Dunson the rebound in traffic. And Whitney Knight says, fine, I'll take it myself. As we approach four minutes to go here, fourth quarter. Nine seconds for Dunson. Knight down low. Takes her time. Comes up short, however, over Quinn. Beautiful pass. Walker gets it to Campbell, and Whitney Knight is just fouled out. 3.48 to go. Whitney Knight fouls out. Body contact before the block. But it looks as if Whitney Knight will get another home game, barring a collapse in the final 348. Knight second all time in points, rebounds in FGCU history. All-time leading shot blocker, not just in FGCU history, but in Atlantic Sun Conference basketball history. Amber Campbell makes both the free throws. And Wake Forest will press. And without Whitney Knight on the floor, Jay Webb, the Eagles are a little more susceptible to the press. But Haas able to get it across midcourt. Clock is FGCU's friend right now. Dunson with eight seconds. Atwater fakes a three. She'll pull up and shoot it. Metter tried to track down the miss, but Stevenson out ahead to Taylor. Beautiful passing oh. sequence. Four of the five Demon Deacons touch the ball and eventually Quinn with the bucket. That pit. Pinion, she sees the floor as well as anybody we've seen in Alico Arena this year, David. 6'3 freshman. Oh, man. From Italy. Oh. Lisa Penna. Very gifted. Haas draws the foul on Penna. Third foul on Penna, 14 foul on Wake Forest, so it'll be an inbound situation for FGCU. And a full shot clock for the Eagles, and they should be in no hurry with an 18-point lead in the basketball. That water might have had a step there, but under two and a half to play. Atwater will try it again. Stevenson gives her room. Kanisha shoots the three. Quinn the rebound. Stevenson with a head of steam and banks it in. 12 points for Ariel Stevenson. 16 point FGCU lead as we approach two minutes to go. Well, David, an update there from Atlanta, Georgia, 62-57 Tulane with a minute and three to go. Atwater, 4-3 with the shot clock winding down, and that's 23 points for Atwater, and that should be the dagger. And Jen Hoover takes a timeout for Wake Forest. 
Shot clock winding down. Kanisha Atwater, her first bucket of the fourth quarter. Her second three of the game. The Eagles look to advance in the third round. Final minute 37 here at Alico Arena. FGCU. It's led by 13 after the first quarter, 16 points at the half, and by 15 points at the start of the fourth quarter. Look as if they're going to advance for the first time ever to the third round of the WNIT. Beautiful baseline drive, however, Kiana Allen couldn't finish the reverse layup. And the Eagles can run some clock here and take it down to roughly a minute to go. Jay Webb, the difference, if you look at the stat sheet, both teams have made 15 twos. FGCU has made nine threes to the Demon Deacons, just two. Haas, back to Atwater. Well, the three-point game has been critical for what's happened. And Haas able to draw the foul on Taylor before the shot clock violation. But also, David, the Eagles have only had eight turnovers to 18 for the Demon Deacons, who average around 20 turnovers a game. It's the 15 foul on Wake Forest, so whether Haas was fouled in the act or not, Steph will get two free throws. This is her first trip to the line tonight. Ooh. Eight points in the fourth quarter for Haas when the Eagles needed the offense with Whitney Knight and Taylor Grodingen both on the bench early in the fourth quarter with four fouls. Kiana Allen called for an offensive foul. This figures to be the final 
time FGC will put up a shot tonight. Atwater in no hurry. Under 30 seconds to go. Haas with the drive, switches to the right hand, and the senior has a season high 18 points, including 10 in the fourth quarter. Oh. Beautiful spin by Amber Long for her first bucket. And with the shot clock turned off, the crowd will rise, and the Eagles will win their 30th game of the year. It'll be the fourth time in school history that FGCU will have a 30-win season. And as Jen Hoover and her staff come over and shake hands, the Demon Deacons 